All right, uh, good morning, good evening everyone. Kung saan kayo sa mundo ngayon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us for this latest episode. Uh, as I promised, eto na pag-usapan natin ang mga issues na we discuss more in generic terms. Uh, in past episode as you remember dun sa episode natin including with uh, former senator uh, Trillanes we discussed the issue of AFP modernization. Uh, I also had a number of pieces recently dun sa etong 36 billion dollar over 10 years uh, AFP modernization program but as i said as they say um I mean, like amateurs discuss strategy experts discuss logistics or something like that so in in that regard i th I, I thought of a perfect person uh, we who we also had on our podcast in the past and of course also i had the pleasure of also having him on my own television programs the signal tv tv5 thank you very much uh, professor ong uh, admiral ong for joining us uh good evening richard uh, good morning here in manila Good morning. Oh, ito na, ito na. Okay, let's get the ball rolling. Um, yeah, I mean, first, you know, first of all, what is your general impressions of itong announcement na we're going to put aside, what, 2 trillion pesos over the next 10 years, or at least that's the plan, uh, for uh, third horizon. In fact, I think the term they're using is re-horizon 3, uh, pagdating sa uh, revised AF modernization, which uh, former president, the late president, Aquino commenced more than a decade ago. Uh, you know what are the what is the good, the bad, and ugly, if I can put it that way. I'm or or what are what are your general impressions about it first, uh, Admiral? Before we go into the details. Okay, number one, the good side of it is finally where we we have it's a manifestation of commitment of the national government uh, to support the modernization of uh, armed forces of the Philippines. It's uh, been a long time forthcoming. Uh, we have. A lot of things to catch up in terms of capabilities. Okay. The not the one negative side, but some things that need to be we have to cross the piece on some areas. We need to also look at uh yung alignment between the modernization program and yung strategy na tend to address various concerns. No? Not only West Philippine Sea, because uh, as well as well as other security concerns. The second aspect of that is uh, yung for structure your organization. Kasi you might be kumbaga, you might be organized like for the Napoleonic Wars uh, for linear warfare but you're already introducing equipment that like that example the machine gun that is actually the solution against linear warfare. So parang uh, logistics or equipment should be aligned with strategy and organization as well so that's the good part are there things that in the bad I mean, because we're, it's still early pa pero meron bang mga bagay dyan, professor ong um in terms of you know are, are there areas of concern or are there areas that you want to see more details and clarifications from our officials well not exactly details though no, but my concern is you the supply chain issue okay for example, you're going to buy a printer. Tapos, you, when you bought the printer, you only plan for one or two sets of the cartridges okay, uh, for it. Then you need to look at your supply of cartridges. In this case, when you buy the equipment, you have to look at the logistics train to support that in terms of sustainability. More particularly, if you're buying high-end type of equipment na merong maintenance intensive okay, and requires training not only personnel but actually uh, adhering to a uh, uh, ano maintenance cycle uh, religiously. So, this one. Pangalawa, and this is arising from yung observations natin from the Ukraine-Russian conflict. Tapos yung what's happening now in the Red Sea and also yung Israeli Hamas conflict is while we go for sophisticated weapon system there is value to looking at asymmetric and cheaper weapon system kasi there in terms of sustainability mas madali and uh hindi we cannot rely on yung the current business model that we buy it from abroad uh, if we opt for a uh, less sophisticated, cheaper, but effective weapon system, we need to look at developing them in-country rather than buying them from abroad. 
so that takes care of the supply chain issue that I was talking about earlier. Okay. And, oh, right. Yeah. Please. Please go ahead. Uh, we need to rethink yung solutions natin to tactical or strategic problems. For example, in Ukraine, they were able to actually uh, contain yung ano, Russian Black Sea fleet with the non-existent Ukrainian Navy based using per primarily land-based uh, defense systems. Okay. So though that's an asymmetric solution to a problem, which is the Russian, which is the Russian uh, Black Sea fleet. So we need to look, we need to think in those terms. Uh, hindi na, hindi, ano, hindi, we need to think asymmetrically. Uh, when we look at uh, yung, yung mga tactical problems that confronting us here in the West Philippines and other security concerns. Right. I mean, there's a lot that we can go to I and mean, we can talk from the Azerbaijan-Armenia uh, conflict in, in the Caucasus all the way to Ukraine conflict, especially in the Black Sea and then what's happening in Houthi, Red Sea, among others. But before we go more into detail uh, as far as drone warfare and all sorts of asymmetric warfare is concerned, but look at the conventional capabilities that we're looking at uh, developing in the coming uh, years. Of course, isa dyan yung mention ng, of course, your Navy po yung background niyo, um, uh, Admiral. Um, submarines. Talking about two to three submarines, I mean, I heard some regional specialist or uh, commentator saying that three is the magic number. In fact, I think the South China Morning Post in Hong Kong had uh, a piece on that, that actually three may look very few uh, on the paper, but it could give us the kind of flexibility and operational um, you know, capabilities that could be potentially even game changer down the road. But obviously, this is very much 10 years, 15 years from now. But first of all, what is your thought about three submarines? Not only one, not only two, but three submarines. If Last time I checked, Vietnam has six kilo-class submarines, the more modern versions they got from, from Russia. Uh, Malaysia has it. If I'm not mistaken, even Myanmar has, has submarines. Um, isn't it time for the Philippines to have submarines? And is three the magic number? Yeah, I would agree. Three would be the magic number. Uh, no, even now, currently, the the navy, the PP navy uses the, uh, the, the three concept. Okay, so normally it's uh, one is up, one is under training, one is under maintenance. So that's the uh, that's the minimum. Okay, but of course, in 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 in, uh, in saying increase to six or to nine, so multiples of three. Okay, so three is the basic uh, one up. One on training and one down. In 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 terms of uh the the submarines, um, a number of countries have come forward. Um, France, of course, at least on the surface, looks like one of the leading candidates here. We also have South Korea, which has already been a major uh provider to us uh, in terms of naval capabilities. Spain, España, even España, I think, offered to even build your naval base uh somewhere in the Visayas region. I think, if I'm not mistaken, um, may mga na chismis sa akin dito sa 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 Washington DC na may mga kaibigan natin. Maybe the Italians, you know, the Italians may also come out of nowhere. I mean. Before, I mean, of course, you're not part of the bidding commission and all, and I'm not asking you to to weigh the scales and all of that, but or you know, put your thumb, sorry, on the scales. But um, what is your sense with all of these different options coming in? I mean, on, at least on the surface, what do you feel about it? Okay, Chigor, before I answer that, I backtrack one and I think why a submarine. Kasi in Ayaw nga pala, no? We just said, bakit magic number three, but we didn't okay. explain why submarines start. Yeah, good. because. Uh, there's a there's a current discourse on them. There's the other side that are actually criticizing that that uh, project. Okay, in shadow expensive. Okay, when we went to do this, ano, yung discourse on do we acquire a submarine? Tinray namin yung problem sa ano. Ang ang major challenge natin sa South China Sea is the PLA Navy surface fleet. Okay, we're talking about the destroyers, the previous and corvettes, nila. and it's the preponderance of surface forces. In the South China Sea, okay. Wag na natin isama yung ano rito, yung yung Chinese Coast Guard sa kanyang militia, kasi that that militia also already complicates the situation in terms of numbers, okay. So the solution namin is asymmetric. Uh, we cannot confront a surface fleet that is superior to us in number and capability 
with an equally surface fleet then okay we for one we do not have the industrial capacity that china has yung shipbuilding capability niya we don't even the us has problems okay to match that so parang asymmet as a symmetric solution will not work so we want opted for asymmetric so dalawa yon actually sa solutions namin Uh, sorry, Andrew, but, for the purpose of our audience, when you say symmetric, meaning head to head, no, I mean like on a conventional basis. Equal, type, equal, yeah. equal, yeah. Right. Okay. And when you say asymmetric, is not necessarily one to one correspondence, but actually you can still match it, kind of jujitsu your way through it. I mean, we're just trying yeah. to explain folks who are not into the defense lingo and all of. That. Okay. So yeah. So, yung dalawa yung solutions namin doon. One would them one of them is the Brambo anti shipping silent system which is uh, for delivery na. The second one is submarine which is still under contention in terms of actually acquiring it. Now, uh now moving forward yung question mo which is uh, which is the better alternative. Now, when we frame the acquisition, ang ano namin dito is this is not a navy project. This is not even an AFP project. This should be framed as a national project. And we, we, when we do that, we're not just buying the submarine, whether that's two or three. We're buying a capability, but also the in, yung industrial ecosystem to support that. Okay? Kaya when we are into negotiation, ang ano namin is, ano yung, yung in terms of uh, what, what do you add to the basket, the basket of uh, goodies? Baga? So we're asking for technology transfer. Package, no? Package deal, yeah. Yung package na, we're looking at, uh, kasi we need to link up with private sector kasi private sector will be the recipient of the industrial component of the ano eh, this uh, engagement. Then we were also considering, we were also look in negotiations, we also ask for, can you help us uh, improve our STEM education in specific, in specific schools? Uh, yung science, technology, uh, engineering, math. Kasi, You need yung manpower part, you need those manpower, number one, to support the industrial base and later in the future, sila yung mag-operate ng submarine. Okay? Kasi you cannot, you cannot employ or use people na yung training niya or yung academic or yung industrial capacity is the human way also to support that that entire ecosystem to support the submarine. In human capital for to, to operate the hardware. Um, uh, Admiral, aside from the human capital to operate it, the, of course, there's also discussion of kind of a overarching strategy or grand strategy. Um, what what are the what what is the broader grand strategy that you think the Philippine defense establishment has to develop in terms of armed forces of the Philippines? You know, I mean, it, you know, we we can talk about the 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 military industrial complex. We can talk about people are running it, but there should be also kind of an overarching strategy, right? If you're going to build a formidable or decent navy at least for a mid-sized country like the Philippines? Well, uh, the Navy has worked on an archipelagic defense strategy before and the Marine Corps independently has developed its own archipelagic coastal defense strategy. So, yun yung so, grounding. Explain this to again. Sorry, sorry, Admiral, again, our audience is not folks like us. Our audience okay. is just like Folks are not necessarily here for defense issues. Perhaps they're here for political issues or marites or, I don't know, glutathion. Um, so for the purpose of our audience, can we explain what, what do we mean by archipelagic defense or coastal defense strategy? Uh, simply lang, lang natin para sa ating audience. Well, in plain language, ang Pilipinas is made up, is, is an archipelago. Okay. So we are made up of uh, 7,100 islands, low tide. No tight. Okay, so we need to defend all of those islands within the archipelago. Now, because of the the unique nature of an archipelago, meaning multiple islands dispersed, uh, and different ingress egress or maraming dao daungan papasok. Okay, for the Philippines alone, we have seven archipelagic streets that we need to secure and defend. Okay, uh, so yun yung nature ng archipelago. So that means, yung strategy mo o yung yung konsepto mo para depensahan yung archipelago mo should fit the nature of the country natin. Meaning, have to consider na marami tayong island groups, uh, marami tayong uh, 
maraming entrance o access ways inside, into, and out of the Philippine archipelago. So, yung strategy natin must be able to look at how do you now defend the archipelago natin. Okay, now that we have clarified some of these basic terms, you know, archipelagic defense or coastal defense capabilities, um, so go, balikan natin ito in terms of conventional capability development. I mean, is there like a, panim, is there a sequencing here? Is there a kind of like, I don't know if you can sandwich it, like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Can you lasagna it? Like, uh, like what is the optimal mix of capabilities we're looking at? given the limitations of our budget and given the time frame we're looking at and given the urgency of the threat that we're facing. I mean, again, if you were to make up a menu, right? Like parang ano tayo, mga war simulation, right? You were given 10 points. How are you going to divide it among certain capability development? Like one point here, two points here, one point here. Um, What what would be the reasonable kind of uh, mixture for you, uh, Admiral? Well, if resource is an issue, meaning your budget is an issue. Then well, you your, is, your budget is 2 trillion pesos over 10 years, right? So, yeah. So roughly, uh, yeah, like roughly 200 billion a year, something like that, right? Yeah. Three to four billion dollars a year, let's say. Okay. Ang, ang challenge na yun, and, I, and I haven't seen the list, no? Yung, yung, uh, Re Horizon. So, I'm go, I'm go, we're, go, we're actually basically speculating. It. But, uh, whatever is on that list, the question now is, Yung capabilities that you're trying to acquire, will it address the immediate challenges or threats sa archipelago mo? Okay. So I mentioned yung ano, I mentioned yung on the part of the Navy, ang, ang, oh, ang uh, existential challenge sa amin 2016, and I think it's still an existential challenge even now, is the PLA Navy Surface Fleet. Okay. Kasi yun yung driver ng, ano eh, ng uh, strategy ng China sa South China Sea. Okay. So, uh, to deal with that, we have considered yung anti-ship missile system, we have considered yung submarine, okay? uh, as yung flagship weapons mo to address the threat. But yung, yung mid-level threat, yung Chinese Coast Guard and yung militia, uh, using an anti-ship missile system is an ex expensive proposition. Kung baga, in, yung return of investment, no? para bang gumamit ka ng certain weapon system tapos ang target mo bangka. Okay. You will obliterate right. it. Yeah, but the question is, is, is that, that's not the way to do business in terms of ROI. Okay. Uh, saya, you're wasting resources. So we need to look at yung mid-level threat at saka yung low-level threat. For example, yung militia. Ang nakalimutan kasi natin, ang, uh, ano, we look at the militia, yung fishing vessels, tagaharang tsaka tagablakid ng Coast Guard natin tsaka ng supply boat. But remember, uh, these platforms are, yung design niya can, can be used for mine warfare. Pwede, si, pwede sila magdala ng naval mines and i-lay out yan doon sa ating coastal waters or doon sa, let's say, Mount of Manila Bay or Subic Bay. They can be used for surveillance. Uh, and I think the larger militia vessels can accommodate uh, yung ano yung lighter or smaller missile systems okay so big sabihin may force multiplier doon so yung low end na yon i think the appropriate weapon system would be drones okay uh para ma-address yung problema na yon uh, and we need uh kumbaga expendable drones to address the threat so that's one now, we also need to look at yung, how do we defend yung islands natin. Okay. If you go back to World War II, uh, some of our islands were isolated kasi binaypass, sila, binaypass naman sila ng Japanese forces. Eh. They were isolated. Uh, until binalikan na lang sila nung nag-consolidate na yung forces ng, ng Japan sa Pilipinas. So, we need to design yung defense system ng islands natin as stand-alone. They can operate independently. Kasi una magbe-breakdown sa iyo diyan communications eh. Okay? You must assume that your communications will break down. That will the first be the first thing na sisira na identify. At targetin ng kalaban. So you you must must design yung homeland defense mo for low tech warfare. Low tech low tech warfare siya. Kasi the more low tech yung warfare mo, the more resilient yun. Okay? 
Kasi if you go for sophisticated web systems, whether it's weapons or support systems, uh, doon naman, doon naman, uh, uh, nag-ooperate yung, ano natin, eh, yung mga adversaries natin. Okay. So it's better to find, look for ways in this. Kung kailangan na, we go back to Morse code, eh, tsaka ham radio. Okay. Uh, as a backup system. Uh, just to ensure that yung homeland defense mo will continue, will persevere, even in a in a non permissive environment okay so then, in, yeah yeah yes uh, please admiral go ahead ah uh, kasi we're talking of the physical side whether yung sa ere sa dagat o sa lupa eh but yung non yung non physical should also be considered so yung cyber ah uh, maraming pa tayong kailangan gawin para to be able to say now we are uh, confident in defending our cyberspace. Because right now, uh, ang assess, uh, my personal view is private sector is the one taking the cudgels uh, in terms of defending yung, yung private sector. Okay? Uh, and the uh, government is still be, still in that level of trying to step up to the challenge. Okay? The second one is yung public opinion. It's also a battle space. And alam mo naman yan, Richard, eh, meron tayong information war ongoing right now. Meron tayong counter I have no idea. I'm I'm totally shocked. I've I've never seen any <laughs> of China yeah. Makapili club around you. Yeah. So that's also part of warfare. Okay. And uh I think we've we've been good at it in countering it, but uh who knows? Okay? Don't be Still complacent. Of... Yeah, yeah. No room for complacency due to sa cognitive warfare nila. Yeah. Um, Admiral, again, I, before we go to the asymmetric and cyber, uh, I think those stones are definitely important. Thank you for pointing them out. Ang, ang point ko lang kasi may plano talaga magkaroon ng acquisition sa mga uh, conventional capabilities. So a few submarines, uh, multi-role uh, fighter jets, um, uh, perhaps a new more of uh, supersonic missile systems, if not hypersonic. Like... I completely get your point. Now, we have to go for highest ROI for what we can develop in the shortest possible time, what we can maintain. Get scanned. But what do you think is the minimum level of conventional uh, arms acquisition that we have to go for? Like three submarines looks like reasonable to you, right? Uh, I know this is your Navy, but in terms of uh, fighter jets capabilities, are we looking at uh, you know two or three squadrons? Uh, realistically, what kind of multi-role vessels are we looking at as most reasonable given you're you're facing a country like China, which has, I think, what, two fifth-generation developed fighter jets programs already. So when one of the largest... So what are we looking at in terms of the minimum um, conventional capabilities we should have before putting well, a bigger part of our eggs perhaps in the basket of asymmetric and cyber warfare and all? Okay. Uh, so I'll defer to the Air Force in terms of number of squadrons. I, I think they tapped it to three squadrons there. I will look at it, ano yung mission na gusto mo perform okay? So, uh, historically, the, the, the Air Force, because of yung counterinsurgency campaign natin, has been, ang primary mission niya was ano eh, close air support. Okay? Uh, supporting the Army or the infantry in uh, counterinsurgency operations. That has been its principal role for the past few decades. Now, I think uh, uh, the Air Force, going to, they, they want to go conventional in terms of conventional terms. They are looking into air defense. Okay? That means uh, they need to establish the ability to protect yung, yung PADIS natin, yung uh, Philippine Air Defon Defense Interdiction Zone. Okay? So you need fighters, okay, air superiority capability. Okay? So, maaaring yun yung tinitingnan nila. Ang aking concern naman is ano eh, ganun pa rin, yung PLA Navy Surface Fleet. So, if I were to ask the Air Force, I would ask them, can you also consider the ability of your multi-role aircraft to carry anti-ship missile systems? Kasi, that will, that will uh, give us more more of uh, the more ability to actually counter yung ano, surface fleet nila. Okay. So that's what I'm going to ask so, uh, uh, a Navy person na uh, sana one of the squadrons will be designed as naval strike for, for naval strike uh, uh, requirements. Okay. Uh, for air defense naman, it's not that we're talking at merong ano eh, guns versus missile 
dichotomy. Uh, guns and butter, or, or you mean trade-off? Uh, guns versus missile. In terms of yung air defense. Kasi uh, missiles are expensive. Okay. But I think one of the lessons, again, from the Ukraine-Russian conflict was they used uh, uh, an older German uh, anti-air defense system, which is gun type. Okay. And I'm tying this up to yung, yung discussion to earlier about supply chain. Kasi mas madali yung supply chain mo kung bala yung yung ano mo yung pinaka primary uh, munition mo compared to missile which is more expensive so maybe uh, consider a mix if not possible if not possible na ano because uh, a purely missile air a missile based air defense system would, might be too expensive for us so 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 may konting old school style na ganun rambo style may konting rambo medyo may konting high tech style but, but there are there are ano i think 30 is uh, one there are providers of gun type gun type air defense system yeah na modern na hindi yung lupa, hindi yung rambo then <laughs> you si rambo na isip ko na kaganya siya daw so, Ratetan yung mga... Okay, um, what about yung mga systems like HIMARS or uh, you know, the Javelin Misa? Some of these things that you know many thought could be game changers. At least we saw in the initial phase of the invasion of Russia how some of the systems were very effective. W- what is your take on those issues? More army atas yun to. This is more in the realm of army siguro na pag HIMARS and all. I think HIMARS is a conversation a current conversation between our armed forces natin and the U.S. forces. Uh, but yung high march that the, na alam natin is for land warfare. Okay. I'm not sure kung na-perfect na nila yung high march na pwede gamitin for maritime uh, for a maritime environment. But if there is, uh, I think uh, we, that would be a good uh acquisition as well. Kasi we need to balance off yung ano eh. Yung, yung Brahmos natin, at the ship missile system, is, I think a range is around 290 kilometers. Okay. So that takes care of our exclusive domain zone. But for shorter ranges, you need a shorter shorter range weapon system. So I think the high mars is a good or, or, or a similar system with similar capability would fill up that, that gap. Now I think we kind of covered some of the conventional part. Although you know, I, I know you're more a navy guy, so sorry, Kung, I put you on the spot, Admiral, on the air force part. Although we are all following what's happening with the air force, some are saying within days we may have a, some sort of a confirmation whether we're gonna go for Gripen with Sweden over the F-16 from the United States. I think this will later on bring us to the more serious, con- I'm not, I mean, not serious, more serious, uh, just a serious conversation about U.S.-Philippine uh, alliance, especially as I speak to you now from, from Washington, D.C. But before going there, need to say U.S.-Philippine alliance, partnerships, etc. Uh, let's talk about the asymmetric part a little bit more. Um, let me push things a little bit. I mean, um, do you think it makes sense for the Philippines also to have not only, I don't know, suicide drones, autonomous suicide boats, yung mga ganyan na uh, ginagamit ng some of the uh, forces in the Middle East, for instance, as a kind of a deterrent on potential weapons against the U.S. if things go go down the road, uh, go down go downhill all the way. Uh, but also in terms of, I don't know, I mean, uh, pwede rin tayo mag-develop ng mga militias natin. <laughs> I don't know, put some of our feistier Filipino people there. I mean, what are we looking at here? Because obviously, there's always this escalation domination, right? I mean, if we we have for every hundred drones we can deploy, I think the Chinese can deploy a million drones or something. You get what I'm saying? It's not like China is is not a master of asymmetrical warfare itself. I mean, in a way, we're saying let's do to China what China wants to do to the U.S., right? Um, the, their developments of ACBMs, their developments of all of these drone systems. What are we looking at here? Do Do you think that the Philippines should also develop its own drone industry? I think Ukraine has done a pretty good job of going from zero to something, not maybe hero yet, but um, realistically, in terms of uh, supply chain, natin, do you think the Philippines is also in a position to develop its own drone and some of the asymmetric uh, capability development industry, assuming we can get the semiconductors and all from Taiwan and other countries? Yeah. Well, I would agree with the proposal uh, to build our own drone drones in the Philippines. No? But the context niya is that we, we already have Yung ecosystem niya would be the self-reliance defense program, SRDP. 
da- dapat ta ilatag niyon because there are some legal legal things that you need per- to undertake first para that can be a viable ano so we're not only talking of drones no we're talking of how do we create a viable defense industry in the Philippines to support its own requirements uh but in our conversation with my colleagues about defense industry kasi uh you cannot develop that type of industry na ang market mo is ang forces lang. Hindi pwedeng Pilipinas lang. If you are going to pursue that type of industry, you need to think global. You need to think of a global market or a, at least a regional market. Kasi kung ano, hindi siya viable. The worst thing that... Economies of scale. Is, you mean the economies of scale. You have to produce at a certain scale with certain market. Otherwise, your margins mo is too thin to, to make it viable. Correct. The point is, uh, government or the armed forces should not be in the in the business of conducting business. Okay, we let we should let private sector uh, perform this uh, function. But for private sector to have a buy-in on this type of activity, there must be pro- it must be profitable. Okay. So the, the ecosystem, the legal and the industrial ecosystem for that must be il- ilatang muna. Then we can talk about setting up a drone factory in the Philippines. Uh, whether that is for for maritime or land or air, uh, then na iayos mo na yon na ilatag na mga ayos. Right. Um. Interestingly, just the other week there was a delegation of more than twenty Indian companies that that visited the Philippines, and per the Indian ambassador, what the Indian companies are looking at is not just you know making us their latest I don't know third world client. But they're looking at joint ventures. They're looking at giving us even soft loans and all to kind of develop also our industry, you know, in terms of development of I don't know, armored vehicles, who knows, maybe drones, some of these things. What do you think about that? Do you think maybe that's the way forward that we have joint ventures? I think Indonesia, for instance, has a joint fifth generation fighter program with South Korea, right? Do you think that's kind of the the way forward? Because I imagine behind the curve, Thayo, but at the same time, we're a mid-sized economy, a fast-growing economy. Uh, I think we can do better than just buying from different countries, right? But maybe joint ventures with some of the mid-level countries like India or more than mid-level like South Korea is perhaps the way forward? Yes. Uh, joint venture and tech transfer goes hand in hand. And of course, we tayo yung conversation natin earlier. The uh, foundation, yun, yung foundation muna would be you... Uh, for tax transfer uh, to take place, you also need to develop your industrial capacity. Uh, and of course, yung STEM, yung, yung, yung human wear mo. Okay? Now, ang kagandaan dito, uh, yung sa Indonesia naman, uh, actual na, na malung, nakakalungkot yun. Kasi, we're buying, the Air Force is buying aircraft in Indonesia. Okay? Mga trainer, yung, trainer, yeah. Yeah, no, uh, transport, light trans, light. Oh, transport. yeah, even the light transport. Not to mention yung mga barko din natin, ang kukuha natin sa kanila, di ba? Uh, uh, for, but, yung, yung, yung industry nila na yun, pinag-aralan nila yung, yung, yung corporation natin dito sa Pilipinas. Binalik nila sa Indonesia. And they, they made good with the running up, running that concept. Sa atin naman, nag-fold up. Hindi nag-prosper yun. Okay, parang ano to eh, yung, yung same situation as yung iri, yung rice. Yes, yeah, so rice. Vietnam, Thailand learning from us. And oh, they up. learn from us. Then Niluto they tayo sa sarili natin, mantika. <laughs> okay. Uh, yung, yung, yung sa Indonesia naman, yung shipyard, yung shipyard, I think quality-wise, we're still, we're better than them in terms of quality. Uh, but they're just better in terms of ano eh, yung running, ano eh, running that industry. And uh, hindi ko alam, uh, there are some factors here that uh, actually, ano eh, that prevents us from uh, progressing. I mean, uh, Admiral, as my understanding of Indonesia is that they have a number of large state-owned, state-backed uh, enterprises involved in the production of advanced weapon systems, which President Jokowi discussed when he visited uh, Manila Nun. I mean, I'm not sure if the Philippines is in that position, but in terms of our private sector, are there particular oligarchs? For the lack of a better term, are there oligarchs there in the Philippines that you think could be a positive contributor here? I mean, in, in India, it's Tata, right? The Tata companies involved in everything, car production. I mean, pretty modernized, you know, some of the 
you know, quote unquote, oligarchs ng India. Do you think we can have a version of that? I mean, my understanding is like Ayala, for instance, getting into electric uh, bike production. There are also discussion joint venture with EV companies and EV production. Are, are there anyone on the horizon or are we, or is this just a wish list or something? Visual thinking. Wait, wait, babalik tayo rin. It's not profitable. Nobody will uh, undertake that activity. Now, there was a time na when we were looking at yung uh, getting two, two more amphibious yung vessels, no? yung, yung uh, second tranche yung Carla class na uh, LPV. And uh, BND was trying to look at the idea of having a joint venture na tapos dito gagawin sa Pilipinas yung ano, yung two yung yung second tranche na position na instead of sa Indonesia or sa South Korea. But ang ang learning namin doon was yung yung current capacity ng ating shipyards sa Pilipinas cannot absorb transfer of technology yet. So marami pa kailangan gagawin ng work para doon. It's not as simple as joint venture din gagawin na dito. Okay. So we go back to industrial capacity at human wear aspect of uh, for, for gas in for us to go into uh, serious uh, undertaking such as uh, uh, building that. No? Ngayon, uh, one way of yung problem of profitability is if national government will be the customer. For example, uh, kasi most of our passenger vessels, commercial vessels, are ano eh, second-hand. Eh. I think they get, they, get, they get it from Japan. It's much cheaper than having it built here. But if a uh, national government would subsidize the project, okay, compel or uh, ask our local shipyards, uh, local shipping companies, passenger and commercial, to get their uh, vessels from our local shipyards, of course, with government trying to put up a para, may guaranteed market ka, yes, guaranteed. Oh, may guaranteed market ka, then government will put up a soft loan. You can pay it in X number of years later. Tapos, ang maganda ron, baka pwede uh, this military specifications ng passenger vessels sa kanyang commercial vessels. Such that uh, they can be used for disaster response, they can be used for troop transport, uh, they can be used as floating hospitals. Kasi nakam, yung design niya, pagka, ang pagka-construct niya, designed as if it is a military or naval uh, vessel. Okay. Pero, civilian companies are the one using it. So then they can be part of the uh, a larger auxiliary ng, uh, na, of our reserve force na later on, pag may emergency, o oh, sige, pahiram muna nung, ano mo, nung barko mo, ako bahala sa fuel niya, we'll just use it to transport troops or we'll just need it kasi merong, merong disaster response sa isang island. We need to convert yung ano mo to temporarily as a uh, evacuation area or a hospital. So parang ganun. So if national government is a guarantor, subsidizes the program, baka pwede ito yun. Industrial then, policy. Right. This is a military yeah. industrial policy. Yeah. Or defense industrial policy. Sorry for that matter. I mean, are there um are there like um best practices we can look at? I mean, for instance, I've been following the case of India under Modi over the past decade. You know, they have they have revised you know, uh, defense acquisition, procurement, uh, laws. They have focused more on developing their own domestic uh, capacity. Because India has been one of the largest importer of defense equipment uh, for a very long time. A lot of that from Russia and all. But now they're moving towards developing their own. Um, what are the best practices from comparable countries? I mean, the, the major masyadong advanced na in Japan and, and NATO countries, but yung mga other developing countries or dati lang developing countries like South Korea. Um, I mean, I think we already discussed Indonesia to a certain degree. I mean, even Pakistan, di ba? Yung mga mas mahirap pa ng bansa sa atin na nakakadevelop sila ng military-industrial complex and uh, and slightly more developed countries like Turkey, for instance, di ba? Drone superpowers na sila. Eh. So, are there like kind of a... Yun nga, parang... Ayoko na ang dating dito sa suntok sa buwan, di ba? At the same time, we don't want to be complacent or masyadong long standard. Kaya tinitingnan ko yung mga other middle-sized, middle-income countries um, or or uh, rising developing countries like India, for instance, or Brazil. What are things that we can learn from them? Or are there some best practices in mind? Well, number one, yung ano, there must be a plan. It must be part of an industrial plan. Otherwise, uh, it's good for six years lang, then wala na. Okay. 
then there must be buy-in from all stakeholders doon. So it's not it's not a political issue but rather something that everybody can agree on that it's something needs to be done it, no matter who is in power. So kailan de politicize siya. Uh, another one would be again I mentioned ano, we need to strengthen yung STEM natin, STEM education kasi uh, we have this but saan pupunta yung graduates ng STEM education natin? Uh, they're not they're not staying here kasi wala wala kang ano eh walang walang mag walang catch system eh walang sasalo sa kanila when they graduate so dito, dito may tie up dapat yung STEM education infrastructure mo with yung yung labor force o yung yung market mo that will accept it so at some point it needs to be a closed system pag kumaga o sige when you graduate you come to me okay uh, when you graduate they say from Philip Philip Science, Philip Science High School. Uh, after that, you go to college, you take this course, then after that, you are employed, guaranteed. Dito. Okay. Uh, you can serve for X number of years later on. You want to go abroad, then that's up to you. But Parang at least, there are guarantees. Oh, my, 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 my conditional, you get the scholarship, but two years you have to go back, something like that. Oh. So, you need those, ano eh, kasi yung, you need those uh, base about to work with. Pangatlo, uh, it must be profit-driven, of course. Okay. Uh, it's based on a realistic appreciation ng regional at global market. Uh, so, merong patutunguhan yun. So, you don't have, hindi mo kailangan patulan lahat ng types of uh, equipment. Only those that will work for you. And it must be done at, at a much better, better and uh, cheaper uh, way. So you, you mentioned about South Korea. South Korea started off with tech transfer. Tech transfer, I think, from Germany. And pinag-aralan nila yung technology. May reverse engineer nila yun. Okay. For, for us to reverse engineer, that means you have skilled persons who understand the system. Otherwise, uh, superficial yung pag-copy mo. Ng, ano. Pero walang engineering. <laughs> so, Puro reverse lang. Puro reverse lang. Puro reverse lang. Then, kaya makita mo ngayon, ano ang tawag ng South Korean sa kanila ngayon? What they call themselves. They are now the the new arsenal of democracy. Especially Kasi, Trump yan yung president nila ngayon. So may pagkaganyan, may... may... No, they, they're now supplying Ukraine, EU, EU countries. Poland. Think, Poland uh, is one of their biggest uh, the customers. Uh, right? yeah. So they're actually, ano eh, yung... Yun yung tinasabi kong uh, yung they started with a local market but uh, kinapacitate nila para mag-compete sa global market. Um, but do you think, um, how should I put it? I mean, I, again, South Korea, these countries are known for really proactive industrial policy, a la Meti Japan and all of that. We can have a long conversation over that. Um, because there are some people are asking questions here about, for instance, the steel industry, not and how depressing things have turned. But I know the Gokong Ways, I, I think, are quite involved in the steel industry, and they're not doing too bad. I think there are two or three uh, steel industry companies in the Philippines who have been defying all sorts of odds. Are we perhaps also underestimating our private sector's capability to engage in increasingly sophisticated and large scale, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing or industrial practices, including? potentially defense industry practices down the road. Magaling sila saan eh. Paggawa ng condominium, paggawa ng kung ano-ano, di ba? But hopefully, you know, you want to you wanna move up the the ladder, right? Value chain. Oh, uh, kasi when you have an industrial base, merong supporting industries through ano din, the fact that means. So example, shipbuilding, of course, you mentioned about steel, but steel, ang, ang ano niyan, is nickel and ano pa rin eh, yung components of steel. Okay. So, I'm not sure, no? Uh, what is up the problem with... Ang problema, if you want to revive yung steel industry natin, I am guessing, no? I'm not expert on steel industry. It's, uh, it's, parang it's much cheaper to get it from abroad eh, rather than developing it locally. So I think that's a challenge. But if you're if you are willing to offset yung... Ano na yun, yung... Kumbaga, yung lugi mo. Just to make sure that you build your own steel industry. Well... Uh, Again, that will take a national government. Yeah. Uh, Kailangan ng guarantor dyan. It's imprimatur eh. Kumbaga, never mind if it's more expensive, but your steel goes to my shipbuilding 
uh, industry. Para ano siya, everything is sourced locally. Okay. So you limit yung vulnerability mo ng supply chain mo. Okay. Uh, like for example, uh, you cannot produce this aircraft because yung chip non is sourced from abroad. So that becomes a supply chain vulnerability mo. Thank you for that, uh, Admiral. I mean, and the reason I'm also asking this is I, I just want to also understand how you folks with background in, in Navy and, you know, naval sciences and marine engineering, etc., how you understand this issue of industrial policy. I mean, I had other guests uh, talking about industrial policy, development, etc. So I, I just want to see where, where this is coming from. Um, now, Balikan natin yung question ko ulit dun sa asymmetric before we go to the Philippine-US alliance. Uh, do you think the Philippines should also develop is a kind of militias um, a la China? Yung mga kunyaring future man. I mean, do you think we have to tapatan sila in their own game or that's very dangerous because, you know, you're just giving them more excuse to escalate the situation and dominate? We tried that. Eh. It didn't work for us. Iba yung ano eh. Uh, it's a system issue. We don't have the same... Uh... Yung, kumbaga, the base that we, need, that we need to work with is not the same as China. So, hindi siya sustainable. Uh, for example, most of our major fishing companies do not actually fish in the South China Sea. Doon sila sa Pacific. Eh. Doon sila nakadeploy. So, it's not for us to divert them to South China Sea. That means we, need, we have to subsidize their operations here. Pangalawa, uh, yung militia ng, ano, ng China, komunista nga sila eh. So kaya nilang i-press yung press gang yung mga, yung mga citizens nila to perform these missions. Okay. Uh, but hindi naman natin pwede ipilit yung ating ano, uh, mga fisher folks or those in the fish community to perform militia duties. Okay. And of course, pag may nangyari yan, may compensation yan. So you're now going to be ano, uh, an issue of uh, how do you now fund yung personal services? That's auxiliary, military, army. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets, it gets complicated. Now, can we go to the issue of the uh, Philippine-US alliance? Um, so we discuss joint ventures with other countries, best lessons we can get from other developing countries. But ang gusto mong pag dito, uh, Admiral, is... When it comes to our, I mean, after all, we're not alone, unlike Ukraine. But Ukraine didn't have any kind of alliance and all of that. And let's be honest, the reason na, uh, tumulong ang West sa Ukraine is because they showed resolve. I think had the Ukrainians not shown resolve, tapos na ang usapan, wala pang one week, tapos na. Diba? Na-decapitate na yung buong leadership nila. It's only when they realized may laban ito mga Ukrainians at tumalaban ng mga Ukrainians, they began to invest in them, right? So the, the West was not just throwing money out of nowhere or throwing money at a sinking hole. They were also assessing how how far Ukrainians were willing to fight for that. And as we speak here, dito sa US Congress, malaking debate about uh, should they continue with this. Now, speaking of that, when it comes to Philippine-US alliance, what do you think is the optimal reasonable and realistic um division of labor dito I say in terms of strike capabilities the the Americans have that because you know I was just talking to some folks here and you know one of the conversation is should the Philippines also develop counter strike capability the ability to hit yung mga base nila dyan sa fire cross dyan sa, uh, sandy k dun sa mga uh, sa mga areas na inoccupy nila to paralyze their ability to threaten us diba parang ano yun diba parang sa sa boxing yun if you have this range you can counter punch right to try to get near to you um, or should we just outsource this to the Americans in terms of the counter strike capability and all and then focus tayo dun sa proactive defense I mean what what is the optimal um, balance we're looking at here in terms of division of labor? Should things go ugly, really, uh, with China down there? Okay. Uh, there's such thing as ano eh, the conflicting yung space. Okay, so mer there's such thing as airspace management. There's also a need to also manage yung space in terms of conflict. Para hindi kayo magbungguan. Yeah, parang... Hindi kayo magbungguan. Kasi kung maka... Pag nandito, lahat ng nasa kanan nitong linya, process namin yan. Lahat ng sa kaliwa ng linya, sa inyo yan. So, kumbaga, bahala na kayo lahat yan. So, that's one of looking at it. So, if we look at it in terms of managing battle space, pwede nating sabihin yung in terms of division of labor. Anything outside of, let's say, the 12 nautical mile territorial waters natin, moving towards the South China Sea, sige, bahala na kayo dyan. 
Mm. We will focus on defending the archipelago. Yung, ano, yung archipelago. Okay. Uh, and our archipelagic trade. So that's one way of looking at it. Uh, the second one, if, if you really want to develop an organic domestic capability, balik tayo ulit sa Ukraine-Russian conflict. Okay. Ano ba yung ginawa ng Ukraine sa Sebastopol? Yung naval base ng Russia doon. Okay. They use drones. So yung counter-strike capability nila, they use also drones for that. Uh, which, is cheap, it, which is affordable, right? Cheaper, no? Cheaper. So for example, sa Spratly's group of islands, tatlo lang naman yung major bases nila dyan. Eh. Fiery Cross, uh, sa Mischief, tsaka yung sa ano, pagkat other one, na may harbor. And we can, let's say, for example, sa pag-asa, we can deploy, redeploy drones there. Okay? Doon sa Ayumin Shoal, the much contested Ayumin Shoal, we can deploy drones there. Okay, itong drones natin dito sa Ayumin, ang target niya palagi yung ship rate. Kasi konting, konting distansya na lang, pwede ka na dun eh. Okay. So, pwedeng ganun if uh, you want to develop counter-strike capability. But, ang ano kasi, militarily, yung occupied isles and future nila doon is not defensible. We are in the same boat as practice. Eh. Even our features, of course, obviously, are not defensible militarily. So they are more of a political statement. Eh. Ito yung muho natin na nilagay because we're saying that is part of our real estate. Okay. Uh, I, and I'm going to put this muho there para to show na I amin mean, yan. We're claiming that. Okay. So yung, yung troops natin tsaka yung facilities natin doon are mohon. But if you're saying uh, employing them uh, or defending them militarily, of course, medyo ano yun, med- that's a different proposition altogether. Um, speaking of the Philippine-US alliance, I mean, uh, how should I put it? I mean, as we speak, they're talking about, I don't know, how, how many billions of dollars, 50, 40 billions giving to Ukraine. I understand the situation in Ukraine. And then you're talking about, of course, the ongoing conflict in, in, in the Middle East. Um, well, in this case, you're talking about the U.S. ally, which is one of the most advanced countries on, on earth, in especially in military terms. So the question here is, um, shouldn't the U.S. actually step it up a little bit, considering the Philippines is up against someone like China? Don't you think that, of course, I'm not drawing exact parallel with Ukraine, but I mean, just look at how far the Philippine Coast Guard, the Philippine Navy has gone in terms of pushing back against China, against in terms of standing its ground in uh, situations, sa, sa, uh, you know, sa, sa Second Thomas Shoal. Don't you think we have shown enough resolve and seriousness and reliability um, to to make the Americans think now we're also worth investing in? Although, of course, thank God we're not in a total war situation like what Ukraine is. But clearly, there's there's that dynamic, right? They're going to invest in you if they see you're willing to fight for yourself. I mean, you cannot be holier, more Catholic than the Pope, right? I mean, they cannot fight it more. Because I remember this very well, uh, Admiral. There was an American Admiral. I gave a talk here in Washington, D.C. a few years ago. And we were talking about Scar Bars, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then, <laughs> Savinia, we cannot want to fight more for Panatak Shoal or Scar Bars than your, your president. We're talking about, of course, Mr. Jetski. Diba? You know, when, when you have a Filipino president saying, wala tayo makagawa, sabi ng Amerikano, eh di, iyo pala eh. Kung wala makagawa, ba, ba't kayo maasa sa amin? Napoprotektahan kayo? Eh kayo na nga, hindi kayo lumalaban para sa sarili nyo. Well, at least, thank God, we don't have that kind of president anymore or leadership. But you, you get what I'm saying, right? I mean, this is this is where I disagree with folks who say, salamat kay Digong, sineseryoso tayo na America. But there was a lot of cost to having Digong around, right? It made uh, it made us look like a banana republic. There was a lot of delay in terms of de- developing bilateral capabilities. And I would argue, kahit siguro bakanteng ano lang, uh, chair ang nilagay mo sa Malacanang, the US has no choice but to take us more seriously because of our geography and the situation with China, right? Regardless of, this is really about our, our geopolitical position, right? Um, But then again, I mean, should we push more for, for the Americans? I mean, we're, we're talking about tens of billions of dollars given to some countries that have already one of the most advanced militaries in the world and are up against, I don't know, some terrorist organization here and there. Um, well, in the case of the Philippines, we're up against the biggest navy on earth. I just see some asymmetry in a bad sense there, right? I mean, or am I being, am I expecting too much? I mean, how should we put it? 
Okay, number one, I, and I may get into trouble, no? Kasi in an, another program, I mentioned, I said, let's not rely too much on the Americans. No? I think, number one, we need to look at yung sarili mo na natin. Kasi if you're not willing to fight for your own country, how how can you expect other countries to fight for you? So you basic yun eh. Uh, if you are not able to defend your national interests, don't ask the Americans to fight for us. Uh, kasi parang ano eh, that's uh, ridiculous eh. But, hindi natin control yung ano eh, and you're there in Washington, D.C. And I think you're at the heart of a very controversial debate about where the money should go. Kasi ang conversation dyan ngayon is why are we why are we supporting Ukraine? Why are we supporting Israel? We need to uh, invest money to protect yung southern border nila to Mexico because of illegal migration. So that's a partisan debate. That's ano eh. So my so point is that they're saying we should also focus on China, in the Pacific and Asia because that's the real deal. That's also I mean I had for instance Elbridge Colby who was the yeah. Architect, you know, on my show before, and and he's the guy who's saying we should focus on China. China is really the the the, the major uh, concern and threat to the United States. Yeah, I agree with you. I also read your tweets, me Elbridge Colby. It, Colby would be the right person. If the Republicans are in power, Castle there, the Democrats, Democrats are the one in power. Eh? So it's basically a voice in the wilderness there, in terms of the strategic community in uh, Washington D.C. But, uh. One alternative is if we cannot do it alone and the Americans are distracted. Because we have to accept that they are distracted with other global issues. And uh, we are competing for ano, eh, yung para pansinin tayo. And uh, either we get a better lobby. Tayo, there, nasa linya, nasa linya tayo. So, uh, or we need to be, we have a, we need a better way of packaging ourselves or Southeast Asia. So we need to accept that America is distracted with other issues globally. And as much as they want to focus on East Asia, uh, the dynamics, both the global and the domestic politics, are, are, are causing them to veer away from, uh, from this region and focus on China. Okay, so that's one. So, the, so ang ano natin is, hindi uh, naman tayo, iiyakan na lang natin yun. We look for alternatives. And I think th that means uh, don't papasok in, we need to diversify our alliances and partnerships. Not only rely on the Americans, but look at other countries, particularly let's say Japan or India, or maybe Australia, who, who are also on the same boat as us, but ang kagandaan nun, they are also part of the barangay. Kasi ang problema sa America, hindi siya member ng barangay natin. Eh. Ano siya eh, uh, he, he, America is not a resident power in East Asia. Dumadalaw lang siya. But we're dealing with India or Japan. They're in Guam, they're in Guam, which is like four hours flight from Manila. Right? I mean, they have bases in Japan and Korea. I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but I think we have to be careful about that argument. That's what the Chinese always use. Oh, the Americans are external powers. But last time I checked, Guam, that's an American territory. Purumang Pinoy pa dyan. I think 50% are Pinoy. A lot of them my fellow Ilocano. So they are a resident power, I would say. They're not an Asian power, but they're in the Pacific power. They are a Pacific power, aren't they? Well, well, you're correct there. Ang inano ko lang is ano eh, uh, because they have other global interests or global uh, commitments. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, hindi talaga sila makapag-focus, even if they want to. Even if they want to. Hindi talaga. And that's why uh, one of the drivers of instability in the region is yung what I call the regional naval balance of power. Uh, yung China is able to concentrate its forces dito sa East Asia. But uh, America's different various uh, naval fleets that deployed everywhere. But yung barko to, that is yung laman ng fleets na yon, they just shift from one fleet to another. Eh. So as much as they have the seven fleet here, uh, hindi rin siya maka-concentrate lang dito, dito sa region na to. No, that's a good point. Kaya nga sabi ko, we have to be also careful with this propaganda na, oh, U.S. has the biggest defense budget in the world, blah, blah, blah. They're really... And I said, but the U.S. is a global power. They have to, you know, slice the pie between how many, you know, oceans. Well, well, China is still primarily an Asian power. And then to a certain degree, they're expanding their tentacles, Djibouti here and there, right? So totally different situations. Not to mention, of course, if you use proper economic measures like purchasing power parity, 
China's defense budget may be close to 600 billion, right? Assuming we're even counting the real budget and dami mga hindi din declare. So uh, this is very correct that the Chinese, they can concentrate themselves as a regional power, dito sa theater, while the United States as of now may not be in that position. And actually there was just a research that came out from the Congressional Research Services that shows that the U.S. at best can fight, what, one and a half major conflicts simultaneously, like barely two. Right. And I'm already looking at the map and it's like one in Ukraine, one in the Middle East right now, uh, you know, because you have also, you know, I'm not talking about Hamas and I'm talking about other major regional powers there in Russia and China also have an interest there. And then here, China. So they're talking about three theaters of potential conflict. Right. Uh, in the near future. So that that's why we're having this conversation. But then again, I mean, Admiral, I, I understand your caveats and, and your efforts to i don't know how should i put it um for to help us to have reasonable expectations about things it's at, sorry it's 11:30 p.m. i'm not at my sharpest but i hope i'm making sense here ang ang, ang tanong ko lang dito is ano yung baseline dapat natin with the united states and i think this is my segue to the last part of our conversation at least for today and hopefully we'll have more of this um because as we speak the americans are seeking for more access to patanes more of our nor northern bases my understanding is that some of the bases in the north may be HADR supposedly, but there are also facilities there to accommodate fighter jets. I mean, we have some very precious things that are on the table right now, which Marcus Jr. has not fully green lighted. Uh, so my understanding is that, you know, you know, even between allies, there has to be some sort of reciprocity, right? I mean, definitely between allies, you know, as we allow the Americans to have more presence in the North vis-a-vis -vis Taiwan, that's a very risky thing for us. And I understand why BBM is very equivocal about it, just to be nice about a nice, I mean, strategic ambiguity, if I can put it that way. What is your take on that? I mean, what should be the baseline from the US? I, I, I completely agree that we should not rely on America. But at the end of the day, Admiral, iba yung treaty ally eh. Iba yung, you know what I'm saying, partner, strategic partner. I mean, whatever you want to call them, comprehensive strategic partner, right? All of these terminologies that Vietnam has for different countries, right? Iba pa rin yung treaty ally eh. It's, it's at a totally different level, right? So what should be the baseline expectation uh, we should develop is a video? Know, what is the thing that our en envoys here should negotiate for, our ambassadors? I mean, let's say, bukas, tayo nag-replace kay hindi mahal natin si Ambassador Romualdez but let's just say in theory you and I became the ambassador tomorrow here anong mga baselines na dapat i-target natin to to get out of our alliance um in in reasonable way that is actually also good I mean because US security is also tethered to our security so if we're not secure we cannot defend ourselves problema din sa kanila yan so I'm just wondering what should be the baseline there in terms of the Philippine US alliance okay a problem Richard with the baseline is uh the baseline is defined by yung politics natin, domestic politics. Natin. Mm -hmm. If it's only purely on uh, military strategic conversation, madali ilatag yun. Kasi it's just, ililista mo yung capabilities mo, and ililista mo yung requirements mo. So, when we define the alliance, the Philippine-US alliance, in terms of uh, a corporate relation, ano yung equity ng partners eh? Ang equity ng US is yung capabilities niya eh. Ang equity natin dito is real estate. Basically, it's real estate. Okay. Now, ang question dito is, uh, in terms of the baseline, how much of uh, the real estate are we willing to partake uh, as part of uh, the relation of the, of the engagement? Uh, and at what level of control do we uh, uh, allow yung real estate natin gamitin? So, it all still... Access. Oh, it, kasi... It, Let's say ideal. Let's say ideal muna. The ideal is we, yung facilities natin can accommodate their forces at any given time. Okay? Uh, uh, they can they we, we they can surge their forces within the Philippine archipelago at let's say X number of days from the time na merong warning order. So that's the, that's yung ano mo. And when you say accommodate, that means pag latag nila dito, we can house them, we can safely house them and they're able to conduct uh, uh, multi-domain operations after they have arrived here X number of days, Y number of days. Parang ganon. Uh, then, of course, yung, yung location ng real estate. Kasi that may, real estates are important because they should be able to influence yung 
yung area that they were situated in. For example, if you're looking at Batanes, that means whatever is situated there, what is every, whatever is deployed there, it can influence Bashi Channel Zone Strait and radiate outwards to South China Sea and the Mid-Pacific. Okay. So yun yung ano doon, calculation na doon. So again, it's, it depends eh. Kasi if, if the, let's say for example, yung scenario na controversial, something happens in Taiwan and the Americans ask us, can we use your bases to help Taiwan? Our answer would be a political answer kasi that would be based on the discernment of commander in chief or the president. Iwe-weigh in niya yung ano eh, yung ano eh, papayag ba ako o hindi. And it's not a clean solution kasi may ano yan, merong automatic na negative ano yan, negative implications. So, again, yung baseline mo would be dependent, be dependent on how yung political appreciation ng commander in chief. And it can move Right, left or right, depending on the situation. You're being very diplomatic about this. I, I mean, I'm asking you as as a, the military, a former military guy. I mean, what is okay? I I understand. There's the politics of it. There's the operational military aspect of it. But what is the marriage of the two? Like, what is the if we split the difference? Let's say a realistic level of political calculations and discussion, and then a reasonable level of military capability development. Because Ayan naman natin forever na hanggang real estate na lang asset tayo. We want to also be a capable uh, ally and partner which can also actively contribute to international peace and security, right? Uh, at least in our immediate region, no? Anti-piracy, counter-terrorism, etc. Uh, not just in Mindanao, but beyond, diba? Um, I mean, the U.S. has an interest in developing the capability of allies like the Philippines too so that we can contribute to an international system that is more stable down the road. Okay, uh, in that term... If you notice yung bilateral security dialogue, yung, yung readout niya, 50% is on security and 50% is on economy. The reason being, I think, dito is, babalik tayo sa conversation on industrialization. Eh. Kasi the only way we can be sustainably be able to work with the, in the under an alliance framework is if we capacitate ourselves. Hindi, naka de, hindi yung dependent. Hindi yung mendicant yung approach mo dun sa relationship or transactional. Okay. It should be, you know, uh, at some point, kaya natin i-defend yung sarili natin with their help, but nakapacitate ang sarili natin. So, baseline doon is uh, they, they need to help us develop our capabilities. Not just get yung buying from them equipment. Okay. Kasi that's, ano, uh, a business, that's a business relationship, not an alliance relationship. And of course, mahal yung equipment nila eh. Kaya nga we're buying from uh, other countries eh, which is much cheaper. Okay. So yun. Uh, we mentioned about drones. Technology transfer. And uh, siguro, ano, making the Philippines part of their military supply chain para we can draw on the same supply. Kasi meron namang basic yan. There are basic, basic equipment or simple equipment that can be common to us eh. Yeah, I, we're we're towards the uh, you know the, the the last part of this episode, but before because I I want you also to remind you ati mga kababayan bat mahalaga ito. But I I want you to also remind siguro yung mga mga Filipino American community how they can be helpful here, di ba? Because as we speak, the, the one reason why certain countries get billions of dollars of aid even if they're developed and rich and all of that is because there's a lobby, there's a powerful lobby that pushes for stronger bilateral security cooperations. Uh, the, the latest one is actually Indians. The Indian community and Indian American community is very, very proactive. No? And that has been very uh, consequential in terms of elevating bilateral relationship between India and U.S. And India is not even an ally of the U.S., right? And they're getting access to you know Airbus engine development capabilities, so on and so on. Um, but before that, I um, think Taiwan... Can we can we go back to this issue of Taiwan because your your take on the Taiwan issue is quite quite unique. In fact, I would say that perhaps we're not an opposite, but I, I argued in certain articles that uh, and in certain interviews that we could leverage the Taiwan linkage by you know essentially making it clear to the Chinese that the more they bully us in West Philippine Sea, the more we give access to the Americans. But it could also work the other way. We can curb the American access in the north if, in exchange, in the west, the Chinese don't make uh, ex extra trouble. I mean, 
uh, how do you stand on that that linkage kind of game or calculus or do you think we should just push back on both fronts and there should be no compromise or i think if i remember maybe the the taiwan issue is even more important at some point because we're talking about a giant island next to us not just small islands here um i think that's where you have some interesting take that i i want to go back to Okay, um, ang best case scenario ko sa, sa Taiwan is status quo eh. Meaning, it is what is now. Uh, minus, of course, yung tension in uh, the Taiwan's way. Okay. So, that's my best case scenario. My worst case scenario is uh, Chinese presence in Taiwan. Kasi now, Taiwan is essentially buffer state natin sa China. Eh. So, if we lose Taiwan, then kapitbahay na natin si China. And our northern part, the northern part of the Philippines will be under threat. It will be under threat because Basi Channel is a strategic waterway. And uh, yung discernment natin dito it started when when China during the previous administration was trying to uh, invest in those certain areas in the northern Philippines. Na kami naman sa nibi nakita namin, oops, strategic yung ano niyan, yung placement niya. Uh, red flag yan, hindi pwedeng hindi tayo magsasalita. Kasi if they gain access na that, whether that is pseudo uh, foreign direct investment or whatever. Tourism yun, naman daw, papaganda yun nila gawa uh, ng casino. That, that will give them a footprint doon sa ating ano. Uh, ano. So medyo nung nakita natin, ito na biro ko dyan eh. For yung ano, yung uh, those arguing against EDCA. Sabi ko, may EDCA rin yung China eh. Ang tawag nila ron, BRI. So, the point is, uh, we cannot afford a Taiwan that is may Chinese presence. Okay. So, anything that disrupts yung strategy nila on Taiwan that, that involves Basi Channel or Zone Street, I'm all for it. So, if you do not want the Americans there, kasi that might be a driver for further conflict, the minimum we can do is deploy our own forces there and strengthen our position. Okay. And we can always claim naman na we have our own agency. Look, China, even if you claim that we are a U.S. puppet, that is our territory. Uh, responsible kami dyan. Uh, and we will protect that against you and even from the U.S. Just to make sure that it's peaceful. Okay. So that's the minimum that we can do. And last one, thank you very much for that. Um, Last one, do, do you have uh, some sort of just dun sa mga ating mga kababayan na siguro hindi nila na-appreciate. So I, I, I got a lot of bashing online dun sa some, some of the articles I wrote about itong 36 billion pesos. Siyempre, hindi nila binasa. Obviously, na this is over 10 years as a share of GDP. It's actually not that much. I mean, when you compare to the Philippines to a lot of our neighbors, we're way behind the curve, right? So so for a GDP of almost $500 billion, half a trillion, spending 36 billion over 10 years considering the threat we're facing considering how far we have to catch up with things not only with china but even also with some of our peers in the region i mean i think i'm already answering the question but but i want it from you uh, admiral someone who who served in the navy whose family has served in the navy for a long time more than what half a century yung buong pamilya na involved dito sa navy issue. can you just remind you mga kababayan natin bakit mahalaga itong modernization now. And I know the context of our conversation is because, you know, I'm sure you've heard even some people, including my guests, you know, some of them were skeptical. Some of them were like, mm, I'm not sure you want to spend that much, right? Uh, baka naman, imeldific lang ito or maging white elephant project store. Baka mamaharli ka fund ito, di ba? Um, what do you have to tell the, the skeptics? Okay, number one, in an ideal world, I would prefer that whatever money government has pupunta sa education, sa health, Anything that uh, would be good for the people. No? But we are not uh, living in a perfect ideal world. Eh? We are living in a very competitive region in East Asia. And we have seen the result of yung vacillation uh, or yung pagdadalawang isip natin in investing for our own defense. Ano yun? Uh, Scarborough, party group of Island. Kung hindi, mat- hindi perfect yung neighborhood mo, then you have it is your responsibility to protect yourself. Now, yung cost niyan is something that is, uh, ano eh, iko, iko, ano mo yan eh, ano yung cost nun pag if we do not do that? Then we are surrendering yung country natin to yung whims and caprices of a third country. Uh, who has ambitions in the region? Eh, hindi naman tayo, ano eh, uh, Pilipino tayo, kaibang 
and the history, his, our history is replete with the lessons of Filipinos fighting for our own freedom and fighting for our own uh, rights as citizens. So I think yung counting in county lang yun eh compared to ano, yung counting investment na yun is exactly. I think quite small. Right. I mean, we're not even spending 1.5% of our GDP, right? I mean, countries like US are spending, what, 3 to 4%. Russia is spending more than 4%. China is spending definitely more than 2%. I mean, we're like spending at EU level, or but, but you know, it's like, but we don't have... What, what point something? Yeah, I mean, like, and and considering we we're starting from a very low base, and and we're up against China. I mean, this is serious stuff. And hindi naman pwede na palate tayo maasa na lang sa sa America as we we discuss. Hindi naman pwede na magtatay digong style naman tayo na wala tayong magawa at magjetski na lang tayo. So you know, we have to find a reasonable way of dealing with this. And hindi tayo si serious na ibang bansa kung wala kang matinong you know modern, de ba? Um. Uh, military or armed forces uh, and as as we discussed we see Mike Loiko among others from AFP Colonel Loiko you know we want to have a kind of a 21st century modern armed forces not not the best in the world but at least a modern capable one uh, what about some of Filipino American community is there is there an advice that maybe they should be more involved in pushing for more american support for the Philippines modernization. Siguro yung mga F-16 fighters, gawin nila mas mura, mas affordable, napakamahal yung binibenta nila sa atin, ituloy na punta tayo sa Sweden. Anong, anong masasabi natin dyan? Well, siguro, ano, keep the burn, the fire burning in terms of yung, yung visibility ng Pilipinas dyan sa, ano. Kasi ang laro, ang, ang, ang larangan kasi dyan, domestic politics yung, 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 so, be a voice of uh, be a constant voice of reminding your congressmen or senators uh, uh, to look after the you know, Southeast Asia and the Philippines. On that note, uh, thank you very much, uh, Admiral Ong, Professor Ong uh, from Ateneo de Manila University, ASOG, the right? School of Government, uh, Professor Ong, uh, Professor of Practice at the Ateneo School of Government. Thank you so much for that discussion. I think we, we went a little bit to log into logistics. That's, I think, what real experts do. Amateurs do more like, you know, grand strategy. So I think uh, people would appreciate that, Admiral Ong. Um, uh, Admiral, are there um, uh, certain articles? I mean, of course, I know, but, you know, for the purpose of audience that you, you want people to check, uh, especially your thoughts on asymmetric warfare, etc. Things that siguro mas maganda kung binasa niyo yung mga sinulat niyo na available to the public for free, of course. Um, are there certain things that you want to flag there um, for people to check? So I'm still writing one. I will be writing one on purely it's archipelagic strategy. So hintayin niyo na lang. Uh, of course, some of your pieces on on thought leaders on Rappler, right, among others, has has touched on this issue. So I really suggest guys to check that. Not to mention also, if you go to just YouTube and you know just put Hey Darian and Admiral Ong, uh, some of our previous conversations comes in First Island Chain, Second Island Chain, some of the more other issues that hindi na namin inulit dito. So you can check them out. But I look forward, Admiral, to catching up with you, perhaps at a better time, as far as my time is concerned. Uh, at uh, marami salamat, Admiral, for for putting aside uh, you know, precious time from your weekend and morning uh, with us. Uh, I can see a lot of people showing a lot of appreciation dito sa ganitong discussion. So, hindi ito kasing kalog ng mga iba, like yung usapan namin ni Ronald Liamas, hindi ito mga usapan glutathione or usapan kalokohan. Um, this is serious stuff. This is matters of war and peace, right? It it, it gets it gets grim, but but thank you so much, Admiral, for for making it as accessible and as as authoritative as it should be because ayo ko mga pa amateur discussions lang. So, thank you so much, Admiral, and hope to, hope to have you again with us for more discussions. Baka gusto mo rin mag-ano, usapan gluta tayo. No? <laughs> Pwede naman. Exactly. Pag-re-text mo na. Yun nga eh, baka, baka magpa-drip mo daw muna, magpa-drip muna daw si, si Admiral and then uh, pag-usapan natin ng skincare. On that note, God bless and talk to you soon. Mabuhay po, Admiral. Good night.